uh, according to New York Post, New York PD, NYPD cops take a knee beside protester in a moment of solidarity. Watch this. Thank you. Have them coming to the circle. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. Yes, I agree. Thank you. Hold on, excuse me, guys. Thank you, Silver. Save it. 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 The inmates are running an insane asylum. The police is taking a knee with the protesters. And if you notice all the names that they rumble off, the protesters rumble, are people who are either criminals and resisting arrest or one form or another would not follow the orders of the cop when stopped. The police officer taking a knee with the protesters. Did you ever imagine that you would see our police department this week? The Democrats have weakened the police department and police officers. They can't even defend the good, innocent American citizens. And they really, really, really want total chaos in America. There is something going on. I believe part of it is to turn America into a socialist communist society and that they really want they really want the great white hope out of office they want him out so they can put in a weakling and they can take america to her knees if they could burn down cities rob steal and kill and the police officers just stand back and do nothing and y'all we all watch it on tv nothing being done they can take your guns away from you, from the citizens. America has lost the strength of America. Men need to come back to themselves, become men again, so we can bring order back to America. Weaken men, destroy men, you can destroy the rest of the country. The rest is easy. I want to show you something that is... Um, I don't know if it makes you want to holler, throw up both your hands, or throw up and holler, and then throw up both your hands. I don't know if this one will make you say, Lord have mercy. What the? This is from Click to uh, Houston. This, this is where we get this from. Click number two, Houston. A video going viral. Talk about appeasement. A video going viral of a group of white people praying to the blacks for forgiveness. And this is happening out of Houston, Texas. Humbling ourselves before you. Yes, Lord. You brought the thunder and rain today, God. Because Satan takes the L today. Father, in Jesus' name, you get the victory. Father, we ask for forgiveness from our black brothers and sisters for years and years of racism, of systematic racism. This is why they kick y'all A's. They, oh, 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 we ask our black brothers and sisters to forgiveness, for forgiveness, for, for, for 200 years of slavery. Why, for you get what you deserve. Men bowing down over there, too, doing that. I don't even know. That is pathetic. That almost made you want to give up on the whites. And that's what's bringing the hell out of the blacks. Your weakness. If you notice with your children, 
when you don't raise them in the right way to be working, to be responsible and of love, you bring the worst out of them. They hate you when you try to make them work or make them be responsible. They're like, what the? You didn't raise me that way. And you stuck for the rest of your life with your children because they're never going to find a reason to work. Well, the blacks are never going to find a reason to overcome as long as you're bowing down and asking forgiveness for something you did not do. These blacks are not suffering from slavery. I've been on the earth long enough to know that. I grew up under the Jim Crow laws, on a plantation, born there. It ain't about that, folks, at all. Blacks were better off then than they are today because they were not feeling like victims. They were not blaming and complaining. They were not being brainwashed by the educational system or anyone. They've been brainwashed. That, uh, that's a sick video. It's amazing. I just want to quickly show you this girl that Nick and Chris spoke with at the rally. She's a white girl from uh, Orange County. And I was blown away at this brainwash. It's just hard to believe. It really is, like, difficult almost to believe that people are thinking this way. Watch this girl on the street that Nick and Chris, a young white girl, spoke to from Orange County, California. Hey, can I get a shot of that welt again? Yeah, sure. What a welt. So where were you? Nick didn't want to look at her stomach. Um, this one I was down there. What's that? I was down what in that world. direction. That's yeah. where they were shooting. Do you live around here, Santa Monica? I live in Orange County, actually. I have a friend who lives in You here. came down here for the ro for the protest? Yeah. And uh, how'd you hear about them? Uh, <laughs> it's kind of hard not to hear about it at this point. Right. I think that's what makes this protest so different. It feels like there's an energy, there's a spark. Everyone's talking about it. The media's talking about it. People are talking about it. Social media, especially, has been like a hot spot for this kind of conversation. What brought you out here today? I was in LA yesterday. Um, and, uh, any any like kind of message or reason why you're here today? The reason why I'm here as a white person is because I feel like white people have to step the f I think it's time to put our bodies on the line, use our privilege, keep the violence from escalating, especially when the brunt of it falls upon communities of color. Um, I think you it's wanted like, to um, keep the violence from escalating. So do you disagree with the violence and the looting that's been going on today? No, actually, I don't. What I disagree with is white people escalating the looting and escalating the violence. It is not our job to be instigators. However, I stand by the right for marginalized communities to lash out. Are, are you saying that they feel like doesn't protect them? So then the black people that were looting that they're OK, but white people shouldn't be instigating anything. But stand but stand by if it's going on with uh, the other the minorities, people of color. Yes, I've been watching. I've been warning people if cops are coming, using my body to stand in the way. I keep hearing, in fact, I heard the other day someone say, uh, white allies to the front, white allies to the front. What do you think about that? I completely agree with that. That's one of the reasons why I'm here. Putting your body in the line of danger? Yes. I wanted to ask you, um, people, I was in a Melrose the other day, just yesterday. Were you at the Hollywood protest, by the way? I wasn't yesterday. at the Pan Pacific Park protest. Um, do you see any difference between the crowd that you saw yesterday and today? Yes, I think the LA protest to me felt more unified and cohesive. Everyone was kind of collected in one group, at least in the area where I was. Here it feels very dispersed. I personally feel like that's both an organizing issue, but also I think this is a very deliberate move by cops and by riot police to separate crowds, to keep us from forming, because they know that we have more power when we're together. Do you think they have any choice? Who has any choice? The cops, but to separate uh, people when they start looting businesses. What do you mean? Right, it's the tactic that they use to separate people to stop the looting, right? Yeah, well, to stop everything. I think they want us off the streets. They want everyone off the streets. So I keep hearing uh, violence is the only way to enact social change. Do you agree with that sentiment? I don't believe it's the only way to enact social change, but what I do believe or what I've seen is that black activists have been protesting peacefully for decades and it has not worked. No one has listened. Change has not been made. So if violence is the only language that people will listen to, then I stand behind that. Uh, do you think the protests are out here for something much big, something bigger than just George Floyd? Oh yes, absolutely. I mean, there are plenty, there's a big long list of names beyond George Floyd of people who have been murdered, and I think it just represents a deeper issue of police brutality, nice. over-policing in communities of color, um, the school-to-prison pipeline, all the issues that people nice. have been advocating against for decades. I think this is just kind of 
acting as... Um, Why does she have a boy haircut? It's pushing it forward. It's moving things forward. Um, I think it just stands for a deeper issue. This anger doesn't just come from George Floyd. It comes from everything else leading up to George Floyd. And this just acted as a catalyst to push that. What do you think about the... What do you think about um, statistics that show that uh, white people die more by the hands of black people than the other way around? What do you think about that? And do you think that when uh if white people were to revolt and act and react in kind what do you think what do you think about that do you support also their lashing out what do white people have to revolt against this system has been built for white people it is maintained for white people it is here for the benefit of white people i don't believe there should be a white revolt i don't i'm not sure where that question is coming from to be completely honest i appreciate it thank you thank you so much take care be safe thank you you too that is insane. How has this system been built for white people? And no one else can live in it. And why does she have a boy haircut? And is she crazy? Is she smoking pot? That is an amazing thing. Nick was like, that's what Nick talking to her. And Nick said, uh, let me see your stomach. He's like, I better use this up. He, he like, I seen it earlier, so he had to see it a second time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we know that. Anyway, that's amazing. Amazing. And don't forget to like, follow, tweet, subscribe, and share the Jesse Lee Peterson radio show, folks. We really appreciate it. We are at war. It is a spiritual battle for the soul of America. And it's going to take all of us to do it.